We are back in Bangkok and loving it! from Bangkok. Now we arrived yesterday. I met up with my friend Andrew from Toronto who is writing a luxury guide to Bangkok and he invited us to an afternoon tea at a hotel that was spectacular. Unfortunately right after that it started pouring and so most of the day we actually spent inside. But today it's sunny and we are so excited to share our first day with you. Now we're staying at La Locanda which is owned by an Italian couple. It's a small hotel, only 22 US a night, I think. And it's just on the edge of Chinatown. And so we decided today, our first day, let's take it easy. We're going to explore Chinatown. Now, Chinatown in Bangkok is one of the oldest neighborhoods in the city and also one of the largest Chinatowns in the world. In the 1700s, the Chinese started moving down to Siam, which we now know as Thailand. And around that time, King Rama I changed the capital of Siam to Bangkok. Now, a lot of the Chinese were actually located in the area that we know as the Grand Palace. And so in 1782, the king ordered everyone to move. He moved them down to the Sampang area, which was actually, I think, fortunate because it was located next to the canal, which was so important for trade. Now, just over a hundred years later, King Rama V named the main street Yao Warat, and that became synonymous with Chinatown. So this has always been known since then as Chinatown, and is one of the most important areas for buying jewelry, medicinal spices, textiles, and most recently, I would say in the last 30 years, it's become one of the best places to eat. Chinatown is now also synonymous with amazing street food. So first up, we're going to find a crab dish that I've heard is fantastic, and it's only eight minutes away. There's so many little alleyways in Bangkok. I find most of the food here is more interesting, but also you never are really sure if you're going the right way. You're gonna find a lot of people fanning yourself and that's because it's so hot. So we left Java, Indonesia, and we thought, oh, we can't wait to get away from this heat so we can go to Thailand and we'll have a break from it. But no, it just followed us. It's just so hot, it's that time of year. We're on the, I think, cusp of rainy season and the city needs it because it's so hot. As we wait for our food, I just wanted to talk to you about ordering food in Asia. You know, a lot of people think pork makes food taste better, and it does, but if you can't eat pork or you can't eat certain things, you always want to make sure that people know. And so we use Google Translate always to say, is there, are there options here that don't have pork in them? So thankfully, they quickly pointed out which ones don't, and Alan can have the noodle, prawn, wonton, and crab soup, along with a lot of things on the back. But that was the only thing he could have on the first page, so it was really important that we ask. I'm going to have a signature dish, which is also noodle, prawn, wonton, crab claw, and I believe in the broth, it does include pork. And so they make a rich broth out of pork bones and crab shells. It should be delicious. Also, I love a good drink. This is lemongrass juice. Mmm, it's delicious. I've got a little bit of a sore throat. I don't know if it's cold or pollution, but this is so good. Mm. Now, Bangkok is famous for getting a lot of Michelin mentions, a lot of awards from poker stalls to formal restaurants, but what happens is that occurs and then locals can't get in anymore because they don't want to wait two hours, they don't want to wait in line for food. And so there are a lot of these little neighborhood spots that are local favorites, and for me, that's much more interesting. I would rather be eating with locals than elbow to elbow with other tourists. This is one of those spots. It's called Odin's Noodles. It's famous for its soup. 
with shrimp, wonton, and crab. They make the noodles by hand. And then they also make these wontons, these shrimp wonton, fresh daily. They have a number of things that are special. If you want to get their signature dish, it also comes with a little crab claw, which they have taken the claw off for you. Now, the broth is made from crushed crab, shell, and pork. <laughs> it's amazing. It's got this really deep, simmered kind of flavor. It doesn't taste like pork or crab, just like a rich, earthy broth. And then I want to try this wonton because it looks so fresh. Mm, that is really good. You're probably thinking, how could a shrimp wonton be that good? The actual wrapper is silky. Whoa. So not a lot of places actually make their noodles. Sometimes they'll buy it, but these guys make them by hand. Mm. They're a little bit chewy, but in a good way. I would say they're like al dente style, but really, really tasty. This is such a simple dish, but each element is done so well. It is so tasty. And I'm really glad that they do have one non-pork option, so Alan can try it as well. This is definitely worth coming to. Isn't it delicious? It's so good. Silky. So smooth. Shoot. Yeah, it's really good. Okay, that was better than I expected. I can't explain to you how good that was, how a wonton with shrimp could be so delicious and just noodles in broth. But it really, really was. It was soft, silky, but firm. Ugh, so good. The reason we came here is that there are over, I think, 400 temples in Bangkok. We're definitely not gonna see all of them, but we saw two the last time we were here, and we wanted to check out the largest golden Buddha in the world. And I can see it from here, it's that close. Oh, fire though. The architecture here of just regular buildings is so interesting. A lot of colonial influence, a lot of art deco also here. So although this would be a spectacular drone shot, I'm actually not flying my drone in Bangkok at all because the rules seem a little bit ambiguous. Some people say you need to register, others say that you just need to not fly near any buildings, anywhere where people gather, or 30 meters away from any object. Otherwise, I don't know where that would be because Bangkok is, has a lot of people, a lot of buildings, and even the parks, which are beautiful, have a lot of objects. So I think we're just going to enjoy Bangkok from the ground for the next couple of days. And, uh, and then when we head south to the beaches, that's when I'll start using my drone. But wow, it would be beautiful because these temples are so gorgeous, especially in the sun. They just reflect all of that light. go in I do want to share a few things with you about this so it is the largest golden Buddha in the world it's 5.5 tons and I believe they say it's worth 28.5 million pounds but I think what the most fascinating thing about this was when it was first found it was actually in plaster and that's because it was created at a time when there were invaders and so they wanted to hide it they didn't find out it was pure gold until when they moved it they dropped it and the plaster broke. So you'll see apparently some plaster still on the Golden Buddha to represent the history of this. I think that's so funny that they would have thought, wow, this plaster Buddha was just really heavy, but no, it's gold. I have a feeling they had to put uh, plastic on these because everybody wanted to touch it. You can see right here, it looks like it's been touched a bunch of times. donation look in the water elements you get good luck strong health and rich like money if you put in some money but over here is the earth elements oh no the earth element you also get strong health rich like money do you think you have to pick or do you get all three if you 
Okay. Or maybe you get one, but you don't know which one you're going to get. I mean, good luck means you could have strong health and be rich like money. Do you know? Okay. If I have to choose only one, I'm going to pick strong health. If I could have others, I would also like good luck, but I would left over. I'm going to go back for health. Let's see if it happens. These fruit sellers are killing it right now. It's so hot out. Do you want to get pineapple? Yeah. Oh, this is like mung bean and spice. That looks good. But I need something refreshing. What do you want? You want mango? I don't see any. Oh, that's sour mango. All right, we've had a couple of instances where Alan asked for mango and it's sour mango, which he does not like. He only likes sweet mango. And I think it's hilarious that I have to tell him, no, no, that's not the sweet mango. When he comes to a country that grows it profusely. So I think the key to spending any time in Bangkok is to just take it easy. I like to do lots of things, have too many things planned on our to-do list. And Alan is always like, let's just relax. The heat here really makes you take it easy and just care about the important things in life like a pineapple. We got two pineapple, which is like the equivalent of a whole pineapple cut up for 50 baht and water. You need to drink a lot of water here. Pineapple here is so good. Mango here is so good. It must be the season because actually watermelon we had yesterday, also very good. Every, all of the fruit that we've had has been so good. Very fresh, so juicy, very sweet. Oh, so good. So today I was hoping to walk a lot, but we'll see how it goes. The goal was to go get something to eat, but maybe, I don't know, maybe we don't eat. And then go see the shortest street in Chinatown, which is apparently 20 meters long, and then the oldest street in Chinatown, which is actually very long. Yeah, it's supposed to be very chill. So we'll see, we'll see how it goes. I think we're gonna just take today as it goes. Right behind me is Chinatown Gate, but I can't quite get a good shot of it for you guys because there's this gigantic vegetarian food fest going on, lining the streets every night, but Everyone calls this the Chinatown Gate as it's kind of the entryway to the main street, but that wasn't its intention. It was built in 1999, and it was a gift from the Chinese community to the king. Its official name is actually the King's Birthday Celebration Arch, and it was just to signify their unity. But because it's at the entryway and it's so enormous, everyone calls it the Chinatown Gate. how green some streets are here in Bangkok. It's just beautiful. A lot of cities like Jakarta, some neighborhoods just removed all the trees, but you can see these are all old trees and they're beautiful, great shade. If you're wondering why we're walking on the road, it's because it looks like they've just dug up the sidewalk, <laughs> not safe. And you can see here, even though they dug up the road, they left the tree smart here. They know that they need these trees for shade, to make it cool. So this here is another temple and it's actually the temple I think of the crocodiles. I believe they have crocodiles but they are captive now because before I guess they ate some monks. So we just had an interesting conversation with this guy sitting outside of the local community police station. He seemed very friendly at first, wanting to share with us where we should go, but then he said, it's Big Buddha Day. The last time we were here, there was a guy who also said it was Big Buddha Day, and that there was a temple only open today, and so we should go. And there was a tuk-tuk there that would take us. And so obviously, they were just trying to get us to go into the tuk-tuk. 
So this guy, I don't know if it was the same thing because he kind of used the same stuff, but then he also gave us some really solid advice and he said, the green loungy kind of tuk-tuks are more expensive than the government tuk-tuks, which are smaller and blue. And then also pointed out some places that we could go for Muay Thai. So it was like, I feel like he was being half helpful and half just seeing if he could throw a scam in for us. I don't know. Now this man here is just trying to tell us there's nothing going on here. He said, come here at night, not, not during the day. Uh, okay, thank you so much. No joke, that just happened to us again. Someone stopped us to say, oh, there's nothing down here, but there's a temple, it's only open one day a month. And we said, oh, he said it's the reclining Buddha. And he, we said, oh, we've already been to that. And he said, no, it's the original one. What was the name of the one you went to? And I was like, the reclining Buddha, the, the big one. There's always like some kind of, it's some kind of holiday and something is just a once in a lifetime. You gotta go now. All right, so we were lo actually looking for the shortest street in Bangkok. Didn't find it, but had some interesting conversations with people. And it's one of those things like, I don't distrust all people in Bangkok, but I do think you have to be a little bit wary when anywhere in the world, anywhere, any country, when people are like, oh, you have to go here. But the two different people said that it was two different temples that was only open one day a month. So we said, maybe we'll check it out later, but we're gonna stick with our original plan. Sometimes you just turn around and you see crazy things like these elephants. They always say when you take a picture to turn around and take a picture behind you. I think this is why. Look at all of these power lines up here. This is insane. It reminds me of a little bit of India. And I'll tell you why it looks like this. One of the things I wanted to see on the street was there are a number of temples, Hindu, Buddhist, but also there is a mosque here. And when I first saw a picture of it, I thought I would have come right by here and not even known it was a mosque. So actually when I showed Alan a picture of this, he thought he saw Arabic letters, but said no, it was actually just some detail. There's not a lot to this. It looks very colonial. There are some clues with the crescent moon, but to come take a look here, you really do need to see the sign that it's a mosque. It's beautiful though, it's a beautiful building and very peaceful back here. It's noisy on the street, but out here with the trees, it's really quiet. So we are on Song Wat. Now this is a very important street and the oldest street in Bangkok. Now in 1892, there was a huge fire. And so at that time, the Siamese government wanted to rebuild and start creating more facilities, infrastructure for the city. And so Song Wat actually means drawing by the king. And that's because as they were drawing the map for how the city would look, he actually drew this street. Since then, it was developed so that it was the main access to the water and became a really important area for transport. But you can see all of the architecture here, some of it is new, Art Deco, some of it is still from that time. And if you look at these power lines, they're pretty crazy. The more we've been traveling around here, just walking around, there's so many neighborhoods here that I think maybe we should come back in January and just rent a place for a month. I know a lot of people do it. I think it could be a great idea. Wow, look at this building. All of the detail on each floor. It's gorgeous. I don't think anyone lives there though. festival it's going on for blocks and blocks and blocks and blocks so at the vegetarian festival all of the stuff is vegetarian but quite a bit of Chinese food already is quite a bit of Thai food is already vegetarian so there are a lot of things to eat I'm going to get this green thing 
which I said I thought it was spinach, but actually I think it might be nori. And then Alan wants this big piece of yellow tofu. This is coming in hot. They're just making it on the side, and as soon as it's ready, they're bringing it in. That's how fast this food is turning over. You can actually feel that it's warm. Ooh, you feel like eating something? You want to try durian? Yeah, let's get the smallest one we can get. Mm. What does it taste like? Sweet. Is it better than Malaysia? It's tasty. I like this one. Malaysia is very strong. Malaysia was very strong. Is it better than Indonesia? Mm. It's better than Indonesia? Indonesia has very tasty taste. Right, but this one is very sweet. It's this sweet. I like this sweet. Yeah. Guys, I am shook that he just said that it was better than Indonesia. Normally, people like where they're from. But, as he said, there's lots of different types of durian in Indonesia, but this one is his favorite because it's sweet. I actually love sweet durian the most myself. Mmm, it is very sweet. Kind of peppery though. A little bit funky. Very sweet. It just keeps getting sweeter. This is the best one. This is the best durian I've ever had too. Bangkok, you just keep winning this over with your fruits. Oh, so good. And with that amazing durian, we're gonna end this video on a high note. Now, we got a lead on a Muay Thai fight, but I don't think I can bring my camera in. If that's the case, you're gonna see us tomorrow. We're gonna do a really interesting tour. It's a double decker, but it has fine dining tables and it's air conditioned. So you get to sightsee and eat at the same time and keep cool. This could be Bangkok's best invention. We'll see you then. Join my Patreon community for more behind the scenes and exclusive content you won't find elsewhere. You can also find me on Instagram and be sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel. All of these things make my day. Thank you so much for your support.